بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور کنٹینیوگ دی ٹاپک آف دی ایریا دی ایوریج آف کنٹینیوز ٹائم سگنلز ان ویچ ٹو ڈے وی سی دی ایفیکٹ آن دیز ٹائم ٹرانسفرمیشنز ان ایمپلیچو ٹرانسفرمیشنز اور سم ادھر ٹو او تری بیسک پروپٹیز سو لیٹ می گیف دی ہیڈنگ آف پروپٹیز وی سی سم پروپٹیز یس The spelling is fine. Well, the spellings don't matter. We are not here studying English, fine? So, time transformation. The first is time transformation. So, if you time scale a function, what would be the effect? Time scaling has no effect on the average value. No effect on the average value of a function. Time shifting has no effect on the average value. And time reversal has no effect. Which means that if you have a signal, x of t is the original signal. So time scale is x of alpha t. Right? So the average value for both would be the same. This has an average value a, so this would also have the average value a. Similarly, time shifting, if x of t is the original function, you have x of t minus t naught is the shifted version. So if this has an average a, this would also have an average a. Similarly, time reversal. If you have x of t, you time reverse it to x of negative t. So if x of t has an average a, x of negative t would have average a. Time transformations has no effect on the average value of a function. Amplitude transformations do have an effect. Fine. So amplitude uh, scaling is the first that I have written. So amplitude scaling, what do you do? You uh, multiply a real number, let's say m, with the function's value x of t. Fine. So this would have the effect that the average value, the new average of x of t, m times x of t, it will be equal to m times the average of x of t. Isn't it so? It is. Right? Similarly, amplitude shifting. In amplitude shifting, what do you do? You add or subtract a number to the function's value x of t. So now the average value of the new signal, it would be equal to the, the shifted number plus the previous average of the original signal x of t. Fine. And similarly, amplitude reversal. So if m is uh, negative 1, so the average would be minus. So if you have minus times x of t, the average of the new function, that is this one, would be negative times the average of the original function x of t. That's it, okay? Well, I will not solve examples on these because that will take definitely longer time. So, uh, these are just simple concepts, okay? Or if you want me to solve an example, so, so, so let's say I have only one example over here with me. Uh, that is x of t, the average is 8. Example. X of t is a function with average equal to 8. We have another function x1 of t, which is 2 plus x of 2t plus 1. 2 plus x of 2t plus 1 whole divided by 4. What would be the average of x1 of t? This is the question. Now we also have uh, two more properties. I would write them over here before going into the example. And that is that the average of finite duration signal is always zero. And you know what a finite duration signal is. A, a signal that exists for only a, a limited time interval, not throughout the time axis, fine? And similarly, the average value of half-wave symmetric functions, half-wave symmetric signals is always zero. 
so this I forgot to tell you in that particular video but over here I am telling you okay so coming to the example so what do you have it's time shift as well time scale as well amplitude shift as well so what do you have now let's come to it first let's say I time shift it time shift it first that is x of t so it's time shifted to get x of t plus 1 the average would have what it has no effect the average would still be 8 fine now I time scale it time scale so which means x of t plus 1 is scaled to x of 2t plus 1 still time scaling has no effect the average would still be the same which is 8 fine so x of 2t plus 1 we are uh, over here fine x of 2t plus 1 now now you have uh, the whole signal let's say I, I take 2 plus x of 2t plus 1 upon 4 this is the whole signal so let's say I divide it into two parts so this would be equal to 1 over 2 plus x of 2t plus 1 divided by 4 yes 1 over 4 so have a look first let's say 1 over 4 this 1 over 4 is what uh, the amplitude scaling factor this is the amplitude scaling factor so uh, so if the average of x of 2t plus 1 is 8 is equal to 8 so which means that the average of now 1 over 4 times x of 2t plus 1 would be what it would be m times the previous average so m is 1 over 4 so 1 over 4 multiply 8 would be 2 1 over 4 multiply 8 is equal to 2 why because m is equal to 1 over 4 in this case so now we have the average of 2 is that fine and now what do you have you are adding 1 over 2 to 1 over 4 x of 2t plus 1 so have a look to this property the amplitude shift property you are shifting it by a value of 1 over 2 so if m is 1 over 2 in this case what do you have uh, you add this to the other average so you have 1 over 2 plus 2 this is equal to 3 by 2 so the average value of x1 of t this comes out to be 3 by 2 so that is how you do it a step wise and that's all about it okay if I have any other example I may do it in the next videos let's say I, I do 1 x of t is given x of t is given to be like this this is t this is x of t uh, let me take this copy with me uh, this is 1 over 2 right yes so this is a naught till 1 over 2 this is a naught fine so you know the formula for it this is a non periodic signal this is a non periodic signal and this is also a finite duration signal so from this property you can directly say that it's zero but let's say we have the average value is given by limit t approaching infinity 1 over t integration from negative t by 2 to positive t by 2 x of t with respect to t so I choose uh, negative t by 2 and positive t by 2 so let's say this be my negative t by 2 and let's say this be my positive t by 2 isn't it so it is so now I divide this interval so limit t tends to infinity 1 over t would be outside then you have what negative t by 2 to 0 it's 0 then you have a plus 0 to 1 over 2 you have the value a naught dt and then from 1 over 2 to t by 2 it's again 0 so have a look these two would be 0 so the answer I would write over here it's limit t tending to infinity you have a naught 
1 over T A naught and this is T and you put the limit of uh, what? 1 over 2. You put the limit 1 over 2 so it would directly be 1 over 2. So it's A naught divided by 2 T. Fine, yes. So it is limit T tends to infinity A naught divided by 2 T. You put the limit T equal to infinity, you get a 0 is the answer. Is that okay? Now, I tell you how is it. So how is a finite duration signal average always equal to 0? We know that the average is equal to the total area upon total time. Isn't it so? Now for a finite duration signal, finite duration signal exists only for a small value of time. No, yes, it only exists for a small value of time. So it would have a very smaller area if it's existing for a shorter duration so the area would be very much smaller but the time is a very high quantity time it would be very much larger so if you divide a very small number by a very large number so you would get what you would get a zero that is simple so the average value of this is always zero which means that we are dividing a very small quantity by a very large quantity so the average tends to zero that's all about this lecture for me that's all about the average as well i'll see if i have more examples two or three about this average so i will see you in the next lecture with it very soon inshallah till then take care of yourself and everyone around you goodbye